right, let's see how terribly this goes. So I'm going to try recording off my Mac. I found something I could use that didn't completely kill my computer uh, because it downsamples the retina display. So I can use something like uh, Snagit to capture. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, it works a lot better in Logic Pro than it does in Bitwig, but that's fine. My Bitwig tutorials will just be very simple now. Um, if I want to, if I'm going to make Bitwig tutorials, hopefully this will help, uh, with everything. I'm just concerned that basically what was going on before when I was, before I started doing this was I was getting sort of concerned to keep checking this, that, um, you know, there was no point in continuing my channel <laughs> because... I was just leaving to go to Finland in like a week and I was like, well, there's with this town, this countdown on me, it was really making me not want to, um, do anything music wise for tutorials. And it's actually been kind of not starting anything, um, either like music wise, because I've been trying to go over there like fresh. Now this is killing my computer CPU fan. So we'll see. This is a test run, if it makes it to YouTube. I have nothing running, and it's just, like, dying. Okay. So that's bounced in place. Turn these off. And then, lastly, I need to bounce these in place. Or bounce those in general. So I'm basically wanting to make, um, not stems. I want to make, I'm trying to show how to do a mix down. So what I'm going to start with is, um, showing what I'm going to do to get ready for a mix down, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't normally do this, but for this time I will. So I'm basically just going to bounce everything I can in a drop I've made. This drop is like long expired. I have a new I have a new thing uh, that I've been working on. Oh my gosh, can you hear the CPU fan? Oh, no you can't. Okay, good. Poor computer. So, yeah, I'm basically just trying to turn everything off. Uh, and then I have, like, drums and stuff. So now I'm going to make a new project. Mm-hmm. With, like, nothing in it. Like this. And then I'm going to take off, like, everything. And then we'll just be right down to this. Oh, that might not work, but I'm going to grab all these bounces I've made. So this, 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 this. We didn't really use any FX. Um, so I'm probably not going to take those, but then I'll just basically uh, copy drag them over. My computer sounds like it's going to explode. Like that. Oh, yeah, that is the files. I was like, apparently we're not going to take the files with us. So then here would be our mix. Bring it over here. And redo because we missed something right in the middle somehow. There we go. Put this at 145. Because that's what this one's at. And now that I'm done here, I'm just going to save and quit. Alright, here we go. So let's listen to this then. Hopefully it works. Sort of. I just need to fix this. What is happening? I 
forgot one of these was a drum bounce. Scared the crap out of me. Sorry, rest in peace, headphone users. What was I supposed to Sure. So, um, oh wait, no, we don't need to save this. And then, so yeah, so that's what I got. Properly done now. So, there's two ways to look at the mixer. You can look at it like this. Press M. Or you can just tab. This is my settings I like to have right here. Right? Someone was saying they didn't like how the bitwig things move. I like how they move. So he was asking me how to do a mix down. So I'm not sure entirely what he means about doing a mix down, but I have my things here, my audio. And then this is what we're gonna use. I just wish my computer wasn't so loud. Um, yeah, so. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're gonna start with is, let's listen to the drums, right? That's what I got going here. And then I have some sub. And then some chords. I have some arbs and such in there. With some bass fills. And such right so part of the mix downing process that isn't shown here is the fact that i've already very well mixed everything that's a great word um everything in here was already mixed like as soon as it was done so i don't do a final mix down per se where like i'll come to the project and then like review every sound and be like oh this and that needs to be changed because i usually do it right at the time i'll probably look at it later yes but like not intensively or i don't like not mix things and come back and mix them again they're already pretty much done at the time so and then we end up putting stuff on the master um as usual to mix all of these together but in terms of the mix down i basically have everything organized into drums and then I'll have some sort of like percussive stuff here. Not really percussive, but just like stuff I don't want to be side chained um, that I don't really touch. So we'll do drums as like red. And then the stuff I don't touch is like black. The stuff that's just there and it's just processed. And then like EQ'd so that way all the sub and stuff's cut or whatever. Or maybe not. Then I'll have something for sub. And then I'll have like my basses group now my basses group it usually just consists so my sub will just have a dynamics on it like just like a side chain my basses will usually have dynamics and a reverb now the reverb i like to make a send for like an effect send all of the bass volume to this effect and then have some of it come out as like wetness to give it some stereo um so essentially i guess i'll just show you that in case you're not following so i basically would have an effect send all the bass to it and then in this effect i'd find the right tone in this effect i would cut i would cut a bunch of stuff put reverb on it <laughs> Yeah. 
with full mix. Oops. And then probably just cut something like around 250. To make sure I'm just getting that high stereo stuff. And that's basically what I do at the time when I'm having the basses. I don't do that afterwards or anything. Nor do I usually bounce anything to stems like this. This is that's what I would do in the basses. And then we'll have a synth group. Where everything inside that group has a cut around 110 or 150 or 250 depending and then usually some sort of fundamental tone stuff going on so what i mean about that is if you play this you'll very commonly see the fundamental tone is like in this area or in this area so what I will basically do is you can cut out the fundamental tones. Um, I don't do this on the master, but I'll do this to each individual synth sometimes. So that way you can pile them on top of each other without them conflicting. Talking about this stuff right here. The stuff that makes up the core of the sound. But mainly what I like to do is I'll just make sure I have a lot of 24 cuts at either this position, 110, or this position, or this position. So 110, 150, 250. Depending. I do a lot of my reverb cuts at 300 or 350. And that's just how I like to do these sorts of things. And that's what defines like my groups or whatever. And then... Uh, I'll make my bases like purple or that color. Then we'll go like yellow for the synths. So that's that's essentially what we have here. This was kind of a bad choice of color. Maybe we'll choose that. And then um, put these down here. So that's what makes up my whole song. And now the things I'll do immediately on the master is add. So you can do you can add a mid side split from Bitwig. Mm hmm and then you do EQ and then you just basically do like 110 or sorry I do 125 and then I'll duplicate this and then I'll do like 35 I'll put this one inside the mid the 35 cut and then I'll put the 125 into the side and then now that's essentially doing what it would have done if I came into my Fab Filter Pro Q and then did the same thing here. Like this one, like 35. And then if you put on channel mode as mid and side and then split it, you can grab the side section and then you can set that to 125. And then this is essentially. <laughs> So notice how when I have this on, the Fab Filter Pro Q is not cutting anything. It's just grabbing some stuff that Bitwig may or may not miss. And when I turn this back off, it's doing a lot of tightening. Um, so that's essentially where I go with that direction. One of my more favorite things to do as well is I'll 24 cut a high here at 15. You know what, maybe probably more like 18. Believe it or not, not many people can actually hear that high. I do though, so I'm always like nervous about cutting the high end because I can hear it and I like it. Uh, so that's actually like up for debate or whatever. But I'll do that and then I'll grab a high pass. Sorry, not high pass, uh, high shelf. 
and then maybe just do a little bit of that. Come over here, and then I put this to just the side here, like this. I like to do this, probably around like four in the 10, 10 inch hertz area. <laughs> Just trying to bring that out a little more and then for safe precautionary stuff i like to do a low shelf over in the 110 hertz area again about like around negative four like that and then i'll set this one to mid only sorry i mean to sorry two side as well oops That's what I like to do um, in that situation, just to kind of clean up that stuff. I like to clean up that stuff. So you do a before and after here. Might not hear too much, um, but that's fine because it just cleans it up before you do any kind of compression to it. So I'll just get rid of Bitwig's thing here. And then what I like to do is, uh, there's a peak limiter in Bitwig here. Just leave the ceiling there and then put the gain up to like six to really get that volume. Right. Um, if you want to get that extra volume. Um, but I, I mix things like lower as you can see here. So like that's what I have to do to get my stuff up to where it should be. Or you can put in like ozone. Right. And then oh, here we are. So we can we can do ozone here. I have a preset for uh, this, which we might have to edit. Uh, we're not edit, but change up here. So. I'll lower the volume here by like six decibels to make sure we're not getting. I'm not too familiar with ozone yet. Still getting used to it. So I've got a mid and side situation going on here. Just cutting and stuff. Uh, basically do my mid side splits in here. Have some exciting going on. Might have went a little overkill on it. Probably going to have to edit that a bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, hang on. I always somehow kill it when I like mess it up when it comes to the dynamics but everything else i do more or less fine here something to do with the high Yeah, or you can do that route. Um, but my favorite, easiest thing to do, oops, is not use Fab Filter Mono because that would be the worst idea you could ever have in your whole entire life. And then, um, so I like to come in here, go for a mastering. Mine's the favorite 
uh, this one, six band squeeze, ding a doo -do or is it, wait, no, is this one? No, it's definitely this one. <laughs> I just prefer Fab Filter MB personally, but uh, Ozone has like tons and tons of uses that I'm trying to get used to it so I can uh, use it well. But yeah, that's basically how I would do my mix downs. Uh, he was saying that these are slow, from my understanding. Not sure how that really matters. Um, you shouldn't be doing visual mixing, hopefully. Should be your goal to not do visual mixing. Um, there is plus and there's like really good things about doing visual mixings and then bad things about doing visual mixing. And so hopefully, um, use both quite well. I would definitely say the visual aspects of mixing, something like the meters moving is not, uh, too, uh, relevant versus something like seeing where frequencies are or something of that sort. So, yeah. And if you want, I can, I'll show you right now the updated version of that song, we were, the song we were looking at here. Let's see, we're 25 minutes in. Wow. So how you guys doing? been gone a long time trying to make videos but like i had to transfer them over from my pc to my mac my pc was starting to crap out i don't know what was wrong with it, it just wouldn't record stuff properly like it was all clippy and it just made no sense all right so uh yeah hopefully this goes well this project doesn't look nearly as intense as the other one from afar but i feel like this one's better Oh, we should switch our settings here. The one thing I must say I do not like about um, Logic Pro, like one of the few things. Um, so there's this weird glitch where when I open a new project, not a new project, when I reopen a project, it's like taking the presets of serums and then just copying them across all of them in like the same group. So I don't know what's up with that. But I have these two things, and it's two, it's, in my opinion, it's a pain in the butt to label uh, clips, but, or like unlabel them, I mean, or anything like that. But like, for example, I was having this problem where I have like two patterns here. So I have something like this, right? Serum looks like this. Basically, it's like plucks, slow plucks. Then I had these ones here, which was more of like a pattern thing. And what it was doing is it was, it was making the both of them the exact same. It wasn't like affecting RC or like Fab Filter or anything like that. Like all these were staying just fine, but it was combining like the two synths here. I don't know why it was doing that. I might have been pressing buttons. I don't know, but let's listen to this. So wait, sorry, I was supposed to have the chord progression. Like this was. This is what I started with. I was doing this off my guitar basically in like open detuning then i was like okay let's have a part where we break down the chords and then i was like hmm this kind of sound better for the drop so i switched it to the drop tried to mess around with the basses i didn't mix the basses in here too well just yet i think the chords sound real good but in my professional opinion here some of these are kind of loud
I gotta say, my favorite thing about Logic Pro is the fact that I just played that whole thing. It wasn't like, oh, oh my gosh, your audio driver had stopped working. Because it will tell you, like, when that happens, it'll pop up, you have to press OK or whatever. But it didn't do that to me that time. And I'm recording. And none of the monitors are lagging. Like, everything's, nothing's lagging, which is really cool, which is what I like about this. Honestly, between Logic and Pro and Bitwig, like, I like them both. Logic Pro and Bitwig. Um, a lot. Bitwig just has a lot of, like, native plugins that just are, feel so much smoother to me versus, like, like, Logic Pro, like, their compressor, for example, like, using the chord compressor here. Like, let's look at this. The compressor is just too in your face. Like, I don't like how all the plugins are, like, oh, so in your face. Like, all the native ones. And then, like, I hate the reverbs from Logic Pro. There's nothing from Logic Pro I can that I really appreciate, like, at all. So, with all the pl the side plugins I have, like, it's a pretty good, um, it's pretty enjoyable for purposes. And this is, like, what my school that I'm moving to, like, next week and going to is uh, they primarily use, like, Logic or um, this thing here. What's it called again? Pro Tools. Um, not that I'm gonna use Pro Tools, but Logic, like a lot of the, the Finnish guys there, um, like other Finnish guys there were just like, oh yeah, like we like love using Logic or whatever. And everyone over there was using like Logic and, um, um, Logic and like Pro Tools or GarageBand. I was like, oh, I feel so left out. Like, I don't use that. I use like Bitwig and FL Studio and they're like, um, no, we use these or whatever. But, like, yeah, the guys over there were making, like, some of my friends um, were making really, really good music with Logic Pro. Like, they were making, like, really uh, clean house and, like, it was totally, like, EDM. It was nice. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, orchestral, which is cool because Logic Pro is totally tailored away from, it's more, it's very much tailored towards orchestral and professional working versus EDM. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to get the EDM part down, but, like, knowing I could group and stuff made everything, like, so, so much easier when it came to this. So, yeah, it's got a pretty nice workflow. I'd say working with audio, though, is kind of annoying. Um, it's hard to, like, reverse and mess with audio the way I want to, like I can in Bitwig. I do like how you can, like, uh, like, if I copy this over here, you can't pull anything, but you can hold Alt and you can stretch it. That's how you do stretches, and then now it's now I'll be stretched, like really long. That's kind of cool, I guess. And the hotkeys are nice, um, for all that junk. So like this is uh, that's what I've been working in at the moment. I, this is like my first piece I've actually ever done in here, and it was kind of like a transfer over from Bitwig, um, uh, but I ended up changing it like quite a lot. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, this will hopefully make it to YouTube without my computer dying. Oh man. That fan has me scared all the time whenever I'm playing or whenever I'm using this computer. It's so scary. Oh, another good thing about uh, Logic Pro X is it uses like very little significant like energy. So whenever you come in with a like, significant energy thing, like Google Chrome uses more energy than logic pro and i'm pretty sure if i were to switch back over to safari i would use like nothing when i'm like battery wise which is really cool because i can use this for hours like and no battery problems and like bitwig just totally kills the battery so yeah thanks for watching hopefully i end up coming up with more videos hopefully this was as of use to the person who wanted it and um i'll see you in the next video uh, with someone's suggestion. Thanks for watching. Bye.